Hi there! I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be the Choose Your Year book tag. The Choose Your Year book tag was created by Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures, and she also tagged me. This tag has a set of questions, but really what it's asking you to do is to go through a list of books published in one particular year and see what you think of them. The questions include which books have you heard of? Do any of them sound interesting? Do any of them sound particularly obscure? Do any of them have weird covers? And it also asks you, why did you pick this year? I think I'm going to do two years in one, and I'm going to pick 1976, because that is the year I was born, and also 1995, because that's the year that I started having the really long commute uh, getting to university, and started reading such a huge volume that I feel like I probably would have read more from that year, but I don't know if that's true, so I thought it would be fun to find out. So let's look. Pulled up the list. Oh, incidentally, if you're planning to do this, the Goodreads list that's linked only goes back a hundred years. So if you wanted to pick 1850, you can't. Or you could, but you'd have to do your own research. And I feel like that would make this harder than it should be. <laughs> the year I was born, the number one book that was published, in terms of popularity on Goodreads, was Anne Rice's Interview with a Vampire which I have not read. The only Anne Rice I've ever read is Cry to Heaven, which is not a vampire novel, it's about castrato opera singers. And I read it just because I like Baroque opera and I wanted to read a novel with that setting. I have seen the movie of Interview with a Vampire, though. Uh, the number two most popular book is The Selfish Gene by Richard Dawkins, which I haven't read, because I feel like people who love Richard Dawkins are obnoxious, so I'm not <laughs> interested in reading his books because then I'd have to engage with those people. Or I wouldn't have to, but you know. Uh, number three was Roots by Alex Haley, which I have also not read, but have seen part of the show with very young LeVar Burton. Oh, number four is a kid's book, Rule of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor, which I feel like I might have read as a kid. I don't know. Number five is Children of Dune by Frank Herbert. I've always heard that the Dune books are terrible after the first one, so I haven't read any of the sequels, but I might someday. I'm gonna scroll down further. Oh, Anne McCaffrey's Dragon Song, which is the first book in the Harper Hall series. The mellower of the... those Pern Dragon books, I think. I have read that. I read that. I read a lot of Anne McCaffrey when I was in high school. Kurt Vonnegut's Slapstick came out that year. Michael Crichton's Eaters of the Dead. Agatha Christie's Sleeping Murder, which was the 13th Miss Marple, came out that year. A River Runs Through It and Other Stories by Norman MacLean, which I've also not read, but have seen the film of. Uh, James Harriet's All Things Wise and Wonderful. I'm sure somebody gave that to me because I think when you're a kid who likes animals, you just end up getting books. James Harriet's animal-y books. I remember nothing about any of those books. I vaguely remember that there was a TV series in the 80s, I guess. Kiss of the Spider Woman. I also haven't read that, but I've seen the movie. That's gonna be... Oh! Bicentennial Man and Other Stories by Isaac Asimov. I have read that and seen the movie. But hey, at least there's one I've actually read. What well, says the novelization of, this, of the first Star Wars movie came out that year, but can that be true? Because the movie only came out in 77. I have my doubts. Or did people just not care about spoilers to the same extent? I don't know. 23rd Tintin book came out. I'm sure I've read that because my father had all the Tintin books. Oh, one of John Keegan's war histories, The Face of Battle, a study of Agincourt, Waterloo, and the Somme. I have not read that, but I'd like to. That sounds right up my alley. Octavia Butler's Seed to Harvest came out that year. Michael and Dace's Coming Through, the Sla Coming Through Slaughter. I have read that. I don't feel like any of these really sound obscure. They just sound like things I haven't read. Um, and I don't see any super thrilling covers either, so... Oh, Born on the Fourth of July came out that year. I didn't know that. I loved that. I It's a tiny little book, but uh, it, which is funny because the movie is like four hours long. But the book was really solid. Um, and if, if you enjoy war memoirs, I do recommend it. Also, if you enjoyed Bruce Springsteen's memoir, the first quarter of that reminded me a lot of this. And later in that memoir, you find out that Bruce Springsteen did know Ron Kovic. So it's maybe intentional that the writing style mimics this one. I don't know. 
Oh, J.M. Kitsayas in the Heart of the Country came out that year. I've read that. Okay, it, it did ask for something obscure, or <laughs> listen to this title. The Holy Book of Women's Mysteries, Feminist Witchcraft, Goddess Rituals, Spellcasting, and Other Womenly Arts by Zuzana Budapest. That's a, gotta be a fake name. That sounds ridiculous. All right, so that's enough of that year. So that was interesting. I'm gonna jump to 1995 now. Let's see what we find. Ah, the number one is Philip Pullman's The Golden Compass, which is called something else too, isn't it? I have read that. Their number two listed book is Bridget Jones's Diary, which I haven't read, but I saw the movie. Uh, the number three book was Wicked by Gregory Maguire, which I haven't read, but I saw the musical. <laughs> oh, Barack Obama's memoir Dreams from My Father came out that year. I did read that. Uh, Robin Hobbs' Assassin's Apprentice came out that year. I read that. Uh, Blindness by Jose Sarmago. No, he's Portuguese. It must be Jose, right? Jose Sarmago came out, and I have read that. Nick Hornby's High Fidelity came out that year. I have read that and seen the movie. Uh, Bernhard Schlink's The Reader, the English translation, came out that year. I did read that. I didn't even buy that. I think I read it in a bookstore while I was waiting for someone, because it's quite short. And they had a million copies because I think it was one of Oprah's book club picks. Rohinton Mysteries, A Fine Balance came out that year. That was great. Incredibly depressing. Bill Bryson's Notes from a Small Island. Neil Stevenson's The Diamond Age. And if you've been around for a while, you know I love Neil Stevenson's stuff. He's great. There's more Anne Rice, because she was still at it. Vampire Chronicles number five. Let's see. A lot of Patricia Cornwell and J.D. Robb and Terry Pratchett and stuff. The eighth volume of Sandman came out. Amy Tan's Hundred Secret Senses. I don't think I read that, but a lot of my friends were reading it. Michael Chabon's Wonder Boys. I think I read that. I don't really remember anymore. Sue Grafton's L is for Lawless came out. I haven't read that, but my mother loves that series. Oh, Christopher Priest's The Prestige came out. I really enjoyed that. And I liked the movie as well. The movie has Hugh Jackman, David Bowie, and Christian Bale. Oh, Guy Gabriel Kay's The Lions of El Rasan. I loved that. That's his, it's sort of an El Cid retelling. And that was great. I'd like to reread that sometime. I don't think it was like as skilled as some of his more recent stuff, but it was definitely, I wasn't a fan of the Finnevar tapestry and like his more traditional fantasy, and I feel like Lions of El Rasan was where he started hitting his real stride in terms of the lightly fantastical historical fiction. Oh, Blood Child and Other Stories by Octavia E. Butler came out. I just listened to the audio version of that this year. The Outcasts of Redwall came out, which I have not read, but I had a cousin who was very into those once upon a time. American Tabloid by James Elroy came out. I haven't read that, but my one of my best friends when I was in university was a huge fan of his writing, so I'm sure she read me bits of it because she was one of those people who would read you bits of things. <laughs> oh, Pat Barker's The Ghost Road came out that year. That is the final volume in her Regeneration trilogy, which is the First World War well, she has a second First World War trilogy, but that was her first First World War trilogy. That sounds ridiculous. And it's the one that's more set on the front versus the other two. Um, and the poet Wilfred Owen is a character in that. And I think that won the Booker as well. Yeah, I'm sure it did. Yeah, I'm scrolling through these and not reading them, but a lot of them are things I recognize as popular stuff. And I don't mean that in a snarky way, like, ooh, popular fiction, because I read plenty of popular fiction, but... Oh, C.S. Friedman's Crown of Shadows, which ended the Cold Fire trilogy, came out that year. I loved that. I don't think it was great in retrospect, but... Like, the, the cover, it had the Michael Whelan painted cover. And I had the cover of that in a wallpaper on my desktop for ten years after that, genuinely. I was really taken by those. I've seen a few 
booktubers uh, review the first book in that series, uh, Black Sun Rising, over the past couple of years, uh, most of whom I think are people who were either not born or were infants when it first came out. So that's kind of hilarious. Um, many of whom have commented that it's clearly early 90s dark fantasy. But I do have very fond memories of that one. Okay, here's one I haven't heard of, but it sounds ridiculous, so I should mention it. It's not doesn't sound obscure, but it's Why do men have nipples? Questions for your doctor after the third martini. All right, this was fun. Okay, never mind. Did I say that has the best title? The best title is the last book on this list, which is called Killer Pancake by Diane Mott Davidson. That's hilarious. So that's a good note to end on then. All right, so I don't know if I actually answered all of those questions, but this was fun either way. I don't know if it's going to be fun to watch, but I'll have to edit in some book covers or something maybe. Anyway, thank you to Mel for creating this tag. And if you haven't been tagged and would like to do this tag, I strongly encourage you to do it. She had a note in there that if you're shy about your age, you don't need to use your birth year, but you should do your birth year and another year because why not? Anyway, that's it for now. Ciao.